realized that we had to outfit everybody. So every member of the fire department, who, the task force, the SOC, PAPD and ESU from NYPD were outfitted with our hearts, good boots, and a tool bag that contained all of the equipment that they would need while they were down here. You and I believe in the other side of love, the other side of love. started, everything was water and food, and there were very few morale items. And when they came in, the effect they had on the men and women down here was profound. I mean, you'd have a little four by six cloth flag on a toothpick, and you'd give it to a big chief in the fire department, and he'd start crying. And children's letters pouring in from all over the world, and the comfort that they provided. seen anybody function with his men the way that he did and um, you know, it was just there were so many people and it was it was a wonderful experience in such a horrible time if I turn to you I walked outside the perimeter and there was a cop there I'd never seen before. And uh, we started talking and I asked him what he, you know, where he worked out of. He said he worked out of 1PP, 1 Police Plaza headquarters. And I asked him what he did and he said, I fingerprint the remains. And I looked at him and I asked him, I said, are we making a difference? And he said, yeah, you are. All right. Then and there, I realized my prayers were answered. I realized, yeah, what are we doing here? Yeah, what am I doing here? Um, that, I, I mean, that's, that's a, for me, that's a God moment. at a scene like this you know that there's no answer to a scene like this but that there's a God behind this we don't understand what God might have done or meant with what happened here and it's our job to try to help them listen this is what happened you're not going to bring the person back anymore but it's our job to try to comfort them ease their pain help them through this difficult time There's a woman from Ohio who was here. She did 
she did counseling down here. I met, met up with her, um, met with her family, the son and her daughter. Um, I see the power behind those two kids and letting their mother go down here three, four times, you know, from home. You didn't have a chance to comfort one family when the next one was waiting, help us, help us. They were just waiting for an answer, something that you should be able to tell them. You know, you try to give them the guidance. It was a very, very tough job. How much the work that people did down here, how much that restored my faith in, in my God, in my higher power. So I'm used to hugs now, you know, because I looked at it, back off here. <laughs> now I do, it's okay. <laughs> but uh, I felt so good that one hug that one night, you know, because like, I did, I took a step back. Who are you? What do you, what do you want? I'll oh, come here, you. <laughs> oh, so don't feel so bad. <laughs> I want to introduce these guys. From this end, this is Rory Murray, this is Trish Strain, Karen Robertson, and Christine Spencer. Since we can't hug you all ourselves, we're going to ask you to turn to the person on your right and give them a hug as our universal thanks to all of you. Ah, you guys are awesome. You are in our thoughts. You are in our prayers. God bless you. God bless New York. God bless America. Straight shot of misery. Some days make a mess of me. I touch the ground when I can find my feet. You know it all comes down to love. Tell myself I can do it all. I juggle everything. I drop the ball. Sometimes it feels my life's impossible, but then it all comes down to It's the rescue and recovery workers who willingly put your lives, your emotional and your physical lives, on the line for us every day for nine months. It was you guys who dug through the wreckage to find them for us, and we thank you from the bottom of our hearts.